All right, the next part, our whitewater rendering. Um, so let's jump over to our scene and continue from where we left off before. Um, one thing that we do want to change uh, just for the water part here, um, you've probably done this already, but here, um, remember to always do, if we make some changes here to duplicate the shader. Um, so let's just copy this name here, delete that old node. I'll drag it over there. Uh, give it the new name, and then that should be hooked up automatically. And I think you've probably seen that here. If we jump to the to the attributes tab here, for example, the mask water, you can see here this is where it starts to stop. And obviously, for example, for the height, um, you would expect this to have some higher values here since it's starting here, and then it get gets cut. That's just because we didn't apply that same shader with the same exports to um, our bump here, and that's uh, why we got that cut off. Um, so just remember to duplicate that once you make changes to this one here. All right, next shader is going to be our um, white water shader. And so the way we uh, decided to render our white water was uh, with points. And so that's how we're going to set up that shader as well. But before we can actually start creating the shader, um, we should actually start to set up the loading part here for um, for the rendering. So where we load the white water. So let's go ahead. Um, Create a new geometry node. Drop this down underneath here, and then we will call this our render effects. And that's going to be geo, and then pillar 01 underscore whitewater. Color this purple again. Um, let's just jump inside here, copy our node there, or we can actually copy the entire tree here. Um, so go inside here. Copy that, jump inside our white water, drop it down here, and then we'll point this to our render. And then in this case, that would be maybe just white water. No. So let's just quickly get rid of this expression here. Cut it, set it to zero, 01, and then so we can see the drop down here. And then we have white water. There we go. And then let's put back in our op digits expression there. And then that should evaluate the same. I'm not sure if we need this packed edit. Yep, we do. All right. Um, then quickly to the rendering settings here. Um, this is also something that we should add to our water as well. Um, so if we just select, basically we can select all of them here. Go under sampling and then turn on velocity blur because we do have a velocity attribute and we do want to have this uh, rendered with motion blur. So then here to the pillar you can already see looking quite nice here um go over to the rendering tab check that this is not set to no point rendering so we since we do want to render points um and then i think other than that we don't have to change anything else there um so now we can go ahead and uh, start to create our shader obviously we don't want to take this and duplicate it so let's just quickly do this here um so this is going to be our second pillar third and the fourth and same for our ship so I'll just call this ship white water and since we're also rendering the white water of the rope we'll just take this drag it over here and then this is going to be our rope i think it's zero zero um, so first for the ship, let's go ahead and grab the white water there so we can get rid of this op digits exp expression here and just point it to the sim ship, render white water. And then I think if we go further in time, we should have that appear. Obviously it should go to a, to the viewport to see, actually see this. So this is loading correctly. Perfect. Just disable that. I think it's turning these into bounding boxes because it's not able to display it, it all at once. Um, so let's just go ahead and turn off the display here. Um, turn off the display for these others here. Let's head over to our rope. And then in here, we'll just point this to our rope. And now... That should evaluate correctly. Just have a quick look here. Perfect. So now we can grab this, duplicate, rope, rope. 
So it is creating them here. Oops. And the last one here. There we go. Just remove the display flag here. And then let's jump over to our shading tab. And over here, let's just create a empty shader. So drop down a material builder. We will call this our shader effects whitewater. And then go ahead and apply that to all our whitewater geometry materials and then shader effects whitewater. All right, jump into our material tab. So let's quickly create this shader here and then start to test render it. And so the way we want to be rendering our white water, um, we're since rendering them as points, but we do want to render them as a volume. So um, let's just drop down a volume shader core and then quickly hook this up to our surface output here. So hook up the BSDF here and then take the surface color, hook that up here and then the opacity and hook that up here to the opacity channel. Um, and then let's quickly promote some parameters here. So the density scale, promote the parameter. The scattering phase, since we want to be changing that as well. And also the smoke color here. So we could probably keep these two inside here. So just hide input here. And also the shadow scale. Now, to be able to have this um, evaluate as a volume, um, we just have to add a um, uh, properties tab here. So let's just drop down a properties, oops, properties. Hook this up here and let's go into the rendering parameters here. And let's go over to the render properties and then type uh, volume. And what we want here um, is three parameters. First, we want to have the, the volume samples, the volume density, and the uh, uniform volume, So, which is a, basically just a tick here that we can add. So the uniform volume, where you can say, yes, this is a uniform volume. So it evaluates as a uh, volume shader here. And then also the volume samples and the density. Apply those here. Apply, accept. And so let's tick uniform volume. And then also promote the volume samples and the volume density and so for the volume density we'll hook this up and then we'll say use input value if not bound and so we'll say where is it here there and then we'll hook this up to our density scale here now the other thing that we don't want to add if you remember when we were creating these whitewater um was the reflecting part so uh the way we can do this is uh just by going ahead grabbing the normal and adding this to a reflection module here. So that would be the, uh, I think it's called the PBR reflect or something, PBR reflection. Yeah, let's drop that down there. And then let's just plug in the normals here. So refraction zero, that's fine. Reflection one, index of refraction since we're dealing with water here. Let's just put that to 133 and also turn on shade backside. And now we'll just take here our BSDF here and just add that to the one from the volume shader here. So let's plug in the volume shader there, hook that up here to the main surface output, and then add in the reflection one here. And just to have a bit of a stronger reflection here, we'll just um, duplicate these. And <laughs> this is just a super simple way of just uh, making this a bit stronger, the reflection, reflection part here. All right. Um, so we added our reflection here. Um, we'll see that in a moment. And um, let's go ahead and test out our shader. And then we'll go ahead and tweak these values here. So let's make some, some room here. Jump over to the rendering tab. And then in here to the objects, we'll just grab this, cut it, put it into the exclude objects. So we can um, just grab that later once we want to render it together. For now, we just want to focus on the first pillar here and the just the white water. Um, so that would be the effects geo pillar one white water, except. And I just noticed um, if we jump up here uh, that we forgot to actually rename these properly here. So this is pillar two. This is pillar three. 
and then this is pillar four and then this is what what is zero one and this is probably why this evaluated correctly so this is two and then this would be three there we go all right so back to where we were um adding that into the rendering tab and then let's just hit render here and see what we get oh yeah and have to go on to the proper frame because this was the frame that we were looking at once we were checking our um ship so let's go ahead to frame i think it was 42 jump here and then also go ahead into the rendering tab here under rendering allow motion blur um, and just turn that on so we can actually have our white water with the correct motion blur which also helps um visualizing this properly and so we can already start to get a sense here um, for our white water so let's check our alpha here if we see and so there is something going on um, it's turning out black um, so first let's check the density stuff here as this doesn't seem right um, let's just go into white water here and I think for some reason this properties tab is not properly evaluating so let's just go ahead disconnect this here and then kill our attributes there and just drop down a new properties tab let's just stop the rendering here so properties let's just hook this up again select here the options parameter interface go over to the rendering tab volume and then let's add in our uniform volume so we can turn this into a uniform volume then also we want to control the density of that volume so that would be where is it volume density here and then also we want to control the amount of samples just so we can control the quality of our uniform volume here let's get rid of that tab here apply accept turn on uniform volume and then let's just start rendering this here and see what we get now maybe the same result we'll see yeah it seems like the same maybe if just increase the density here to 10 Ah, uh, yeah, now we're talking. Maybe a bit more, 100. Yeah, that looks like high bar water. All right. Okay, so that was the issue there. Um, the samples, let's just go a bit higher here. So for four, just so we increase the quality a bit. Um, this does look like as if it's shrinking it, but um, it's just doing a better sampling of our volume here. And now back to the main tab, I think, because what we're doing here is we're uh, using the physically physically based rendering options there and i think we're on a ray tracing engine here so if we go over to the physical based rendering switch that on and then hit the rendering tab we now we should get some shading here there we go all right um just before we continue this let's just quickly refine our settings here um so for the shadow scale let's just go for a value of 0.5 um, for our scattering phase, let's go to um, 0.25, should be fine, just so we get a, a good amount of um, light that scatters inside the volume here. And for the smoke color, we'll just keep this at 1, that should be fine. Let's uh, go ahead and start to, to render this. Pick a frame here and then start just to render the entire thing. Um, we'll stop this and first add in our other objects as well, just so we can see how these combine. And also what I want to do here is add in our animation object. So that would be our pillar. And that is, let me see, render scene pillars and probably add the ropes as well. Accept. All right. Save our scene and then hit render and we'll come back in a moment. All right, um, so this is our current white water shader. Um, already looks quite nice. Here you can really see the reflecting parts kicking in. Um, so if we jump here, uh, this is also something that I did add before the rendering here. If you go to extra image planes, you can just add another tab here and then select um, what is it, combined lighting per component. And the components it's going to use are the ones um, specified here. So it's going to split it apart for the diffuse, reflect, coat, refract, and volume and the subsurface scattering. Um, we probably don't need the subsurface scattering and don't need the code as well. Um, but for now, that's fine. I'll just keep it this way. Um, and so if we jump here to the drop down, we can go to our reflection tab here and then we see the reflect here. And then you can really see here in our in our volume areas here, 
from our white water, we can see the reflecting parts there. Um, so let's jump back to our main render here. You can already see also the white water here where the rope went through, which also adds a bit of interest there. Of course, there's going to be white water for the rope itself, um, which will be rendering separately. Um, but as for a main white water, this already looks looks quite nice. Um, so if we compare with our previous render here, this is without, and this is with the white water. Of course, there's motion blur added now, so this also really helps. Um, and yeah, I think this wraps it for the white water. Um, the only thing that we have to add now is the um, underwater bubbles. So we'll do that quickly now. Um, so let's jump up to our uh, object level here. We'll just grab the white water, drag it down, and then we'll call this our bubble. And then this will be our shader bubble, which we still have to create. Um, and then let's jump inside and point this to our, not sure if it's white water bubble or if it's just bubble. I'll just type bubble, see if that does anything. Yep, seems like that was the correct one. All right, go ahead and duplicate this node. The settings should be fine here. Now you can see this is the bottom part, so this is the the regular white water, and these are the bubbles underneath, which also do sometimes stick a bit to the surface. So this will also help a bit um, integrate this. And so let's just take this node here, duplicate, pillar two, three. Four, and the same for the ship. So this will be then our ship. Let's jump inside here, change this to our ship bubble. That should be fine. Now let's take this note here, drag it over here. And this is going to be our rope. Jump inside the rope here. Change this to the rope instead of the pillar. So this is going to be rope. And that should be really correctly. Perfect. And now we can go ahead and duplicate this. One, two, and three. And let's go ahead and rename these properly. Two, and the last one, three. All right. Just do a quick check here, see if this is properly loading everything. Yes, it is. All right, turn them off again. And for the bubble shader, this is just going to be a super simple reflectance shader. So let's go ahead, create a material builder. This will be our shader effects bubble. Jump inside, make a bit of space, drop down a classic shader core. Hook up our normal for the reflection here. Um, base normal. Go into the diffuse tab here. Set the color to one. Um, the reflection. Set the roughness to zero since we just want full reflection. Um, don't want to have heavy computation times there. And. And if we go to our settings tab back here, the IOR, um, theoretically this would be correct, but we just wanted something really high reflective underneath the water um, since we're probably not gonna see this. So we're just gonna set this to a very, very high value. So no matter from which angle we're looking at it, it's gonna be reflecting under the water. Um, and so let's take this here and export these. First, we have to do a compute lighting and then we can plug those components into here 
hook that all up. The names are quite clear of how to connect it. Surface color, surface opacity, and our PSDF there. All right, let's give this a quick test render. Um, so save a screenshot there. And let's go ahead, rendering tab, objects, select our, instead of our white water, we're going to select our, um, our bubble here, just to see how they look on themselves, or on their own, rather. And so if we look closer here, um, once we finish our bubble render, um, and compare this to our previous render that we had, of course, we added the animation objects and motion blur. Um, but we can, if we look closely here at the bottom, for example, um, we can see these additional points coming in. And also, if you look over here, not sure if you can tell, but uh, it's a subtle, very subtle effect where you start to see some stuff under the water. And especially when this starts to move, you'll really see like the, the, the like bubbles rising underneath. Um, it's not going to be very, like a very strong effect, but um, it definitely helps add some additional stuff here. All right, um, so we can go ahead and uh, combine these together and render them. Um, so we'll just quickly do that, and then I think we're we can wrap our white water section here. So quickly save this frame here, and then we'll render this together. All right, finished rendering um, both of these two effects together. Um, I also went ahead and rendered a, another frame here. Um, so just to show how the white water evolves and also later that we get this nice reflection stuff here happening. Um, so our normal kicking in here. And here you can also see the underlying uh, bubbles showing. And you'll really see that once this starts to move. And um, here we have our nice dripping effect and also um, the separation between the spray and the main uh, mist layer that we did in the whitewater sim um, where we got like this fine stuff floating back behind and um, the main clumping parts here that we see here where we have the, the whitewater that is clumping and then also at the bottom our nice foam that is forming here starting to create these nice shapes and patterns. So. Yeah, this wraps it up for the whitewater section. And in the next part, we're going to be going over the last part of the rendering section for the effects, which will be the mist. Um, so the smoke and the mist particles that we created.